Hey guys, welcome back to the third episode of Living With an F56 JCW. Today we're going to be looking at uh, daily drivability uh, on the F56 JCWs um, and we're just going to sort of address some of the things that you almost have to live with on a daily basis. So to start off, one thing I want to talk about is the ride comfort. So I've mentioned this before that it's quite a firm ride. Generally speaking around about town it's absolutely fine. Uh, Obviously you've just got a few potholes and things that you have to be aware of and try not to hit those. But besides from that, it's a pretty nice ride to be honest. Uh, the road noise isn't great. It's quite a loud cabin to be in. Um, I've heard that's partially down to run flat tires. I haven't tried this car without run flat tires yet, but it's definitely something I aim to do in the future. Um, Cause they, you know, with the harder side walls, I think they really do affect the road noise. And make the cabin a lot louder. So, I mean, given the performance uh, sort of involved with this car, it's, it's actually not too bad around town to drive. It's pretty easy. Um, I spend quite a lot of time sitting in traffic, unfortunately, and I can't say it's particularly unpleasant, to be honest. Okay, so one of the things obviously you have to live with on a daily basis is the looks of the car. So what do we think? I mean, personally, I quite like the look. Um, Maybe not from the front so much as the back or the back three quarter angle. So obviously the previous gen, uh, the R56, um, is debatably a better looking car. Um, I think the front end overhang was quite a lot shorter on those cars. Whereas on this is quite more pronounced. I don't really mind it too much, but it's obviously quite subjective uh, in terms of what people think of the looks. I definitely think from a side profile, it's a good looking car. Okay, so obviously one of the other things is boot size. Uh, it's something that it's more important to some people than others. On this car, it's pretty small. Um, you know, it's not a big car. You know, you can't really expect it to be that big. It's roughly 210 litres, um, I believe. Uh, but you can see we've got some camera equipment in there. It fits quite well. I never carry too much stuff in this car, so it does the job. So one of the main things uh, about living with the car is obviously interior, because that's where you spend most of the time. Um, so we've got some really nice bolster on these seats. Uh, these are Recaro bucket seats. Um, you can kind of see the depth of the bolster. Um, and you can really feel that when you're driving, going around corners, it really holds you in well. Uh, it's kind of like a suede, or it might even be Alcantara. I'm not sure if it is actually genuine Alcantara, but it's a really nice kind of suede material with some leather on the sides. Uh, really comfortable seats. Honestly, can't fault them. Over long journeys, um, never get any back pain or anything like that. Okay, so on the F56 JCWs, um, it's got obviously the built-in nav screen and stuff. There's two different options you can have. Um, there's the basic nav, um, I'm not really sure what that one includes. This one's got the Media XL pack. So the main thing is the extra width on the screen. So obviously you've got, you got your standard stuff, vehicle information, um, you, know, you can get tire pressures up, things like that. It's also got the performance meters that you get in other BMWs and stuff like that. I believe this system is literally just a derivative of the iDrive system in other BMWs. You've also got obviously navigation um, and various other things. Bluetooth connectivity, radio, all that stuff. So, I mean, as far as this goes, it's pretty well equipped. Um, as to who actually uses most of this stuff, um, I don't really know. I don't really use that much of it at all. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely does the job. So obviously, one thing with performance-orientated cars is often ground clearance. The Mini JCWs aren't particularly low to the ground from factory anyway. And I think even with aftermarket shocks, they only tend to drop like maybe an inch. Um, and as you can see, the ground clearance is pretty good. So yeah, I've never actually scraped this car um, on any speed bumps or anything like that, so I can't really fault it there. Obviously, yeah, these cars, cars come pretty well equipped these days. Um, you can spec heated seats, even with these Recaro bucket seats. Uh, I don't have them, actually. I can't say particularly no, it's not having them. They're not, like, 
stupidly cold in the morning or anything when you get in, like leather seats would be. Um, so I can't really say that's something I'd particularly want to spec. So obviously, as mentioned in the first episode, it's got that performance pretty much on tap, which is nice. You get onto some faster stretches of the road and you just want to get past people, you've always got the power to do that, which is obviously not something you have in a lot of hatchbacks. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Um, it's quite a short one. As you know, we've kind of touched on a lot of the main things of this car. I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of actually what it's like to live with sort of day in, day out, especially around town, because that's not something uh, you, you know, you tend to sort of buy a car for, um, particularly anyway. So if you haven't already checked out the uh, two episodes we've done prior to this, uh, I'll leave the links in the description below and also they'll be on the end screen at the end of the video. They'll just give you a bit more of an idea on specifics of performance and running costs of the car as well which uh, we obviously didn't address too much in this one. So as always, subscribe to the channel for more content. We've got loads of stuff planned this year. Um, it's gonna be a pretty good year for the channel. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.